you might have been tuning in in, in uh, the last hour where we announced a grudge match. Uh, I like to call it the Battle of the Brum, perhaps. Yeah. Gabby Agbon Lahore taking on Troy Deeney. Uh, I've looked on our social media accounts where we posted this this, this morning. We've got some clever listeners, as you can well expect. A lot of people looked at the date and went, yeah, nice one. It's April the 1st. Yeah, yeah it was an April Fool's. So for all of you that got that right, well done to you. A few people, though, were like, I'd love this to be true. Imagine seeing these two go in the ring. Darren, Even our own Darren Bent went with, can't wait for this. Whose idea mm. was this, Nat? Like, wasting my time, I... your time, and everybody else's time. It's just a joke. It's a, it's a good fight, to be fair. Do you think? I think we could still make it. Oh, all right, Spencer. Yeah. Would you like to train one of them? Listen, I'll, I'll get the ladle out and I'll start stirring <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll try and get it to go. Yeah, but oh, I wouldn't right. mind training, yeah. I mean, Troy Deeney's a good mate of Anthony Joshua, so he'll have little oh, contacts there gosh, and he can go and do whatever. Are. So I'll have to look after Gabby, he's I suppose. Right. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so it's Troy's got a bit of an advantage who so can have AJ in his corner. Well, I'm not saying you it, wouldn't be a great I, advantage. No, but you would. AJ's not throwing the punches for him, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. You know? That's I mean, true. look at what happened last night. That well, fight last night... Let's, Unbelievable. Let's focus on that because you were at the O2 Arena. Let's talk mm -hmm. about the real, the real boxing, shall we? Yeah. Uh, it's it was billed as bad blood. I think it's fair to say it lived up to the hype. What price a draw? You never know. Right up the cut from Clark. Great shot, and somehow Wardley takes it all around the arena. People are standing up and cheering. It's almost seems invidious for there to be a winner here. tries to draw the two men together. Fraser Clark sinks onto the ropes. He doesn't have the strength to stay upright. Fabio Wardley is being hoisted aloft in the other corner by Dillian White, who thinks his man has won the fight. There almost shouldn't be a loser there. Just an incredible 12 rounds of heavyweight conflict. One of the best fights I've witnessed live. That was absolutely insane. So yes, it ended that bruising British heavyweight title in a split decision draw. Spencer, you were talking how great a fight mm. it was. I mean, the day after the night before, you still feel as though it was one of the crackers? Absolutely, still recovering. I think the O2 Arena is great when it's packed out like it was last night. You've been there, Nat. You know what the atmosphere can be like there. And... Um, you say that with a smile on your face, but that's another story. That but is another say, story. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Alcohol. Gin and tonic. Hey, yeah, uh, uh, I told yeah, you. There you go. Absolutely. Oh, but, damn. but anyway, yeah. I've learned my lesson now, I must say. I've learned my lesson. We've grown up now. We we've grown up. <laughs> but um, yeah, the atmosphere there was absolutely insane. And we knew it was going to be a good fight, but boy, did it deliver. I mean, you know, no one expected it to go the way that it did. It was one of the greatest British heavyweight fights, mm. I think, of all time, if I'm totally honest. Like, it was the character that they were both showing. Like, after round four, you're thinking, they're both gone here. They haven't got a lot left. <laughs> Round five, Fraser goes down and you think he's done Like because you think like now... And he looked a bit stunned as well. Absolutely. You think what, Wardley's going to jump on him, the bell rings, then he comes out, puts it back on Wardley and like... Just when you think one guy is taking control, the other guy was coming back and we get to like sort of round 10, 11, 12, the penultimate rounds and you're looking at it and you're going, where are they finding this from? Like now, like forget the physicalities. This is all about the mental strength, digging deep, biting down their gum shield and just finding something. Even when we went into the 12th round, both guys, I mean, they were like they were walking on stilts, going back to the corner, coming out for the 12th round. And you think one shot here, it was edge of your seat, uh, seat stuff because you're going one shot and this fight is over. But they just kept finding it. I mean, I'm so pleased it was a draw mm. because it was worthy of that. And I think the only downside for them two is they've got to do it again, which is a massive <laughs> oh. plus for us. Well, I was going to say, I, we that's, like that. the, that's the only fight I think I've ever watched where when there was five seconds to go at the end of every round, there was still a chance of a knockout. <laughs> I'm with you. They were they were reeling on the ropes, and he was thinking one punch, and like it's yeah. still time. But um, Fraser Clark sitting on the floor at the end, and the comment I don't know who the commentator was. John Rawling. He went, yeah. get up off the floor uh, in oh, case yeah. it's a draw. Oh, they, yeah. Oh, no, that was, um, yeah, I think that was George Groves, actually. Was he was it? doing it for Sky, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he was right in what he was saying, but listen, how can you get up off the floor? It was like, then both guys, the first time that they'd both been 12 rounds, and I mean, like I say, like at the end of that final, final round when that bell rang, they were 
absolutely spent to the point that mm. they walked to the corner. You saw Fraser slump on the yes, floor. Yeah. I mean, he just had nothing left. And and Fabio Wardley had that horrendous oh. cut over oh. his nose. I mean, it was like a bloodbath, wasn't oh, it? it? Was awful. And you just go like you're looking at it, and I was just like, I was yeah, I was amazed. It, it was. I think even with, like you say, five seconds to go, I'm on the edge of my seat, we're commentating. I, like, I don't know how many times I nearly fell off the seat watching what was going on. I'm thinking, one shot and mm. this is all over. But yeah, what a fight. You know Congratulations to both of them. Uh, you, I mean, obviously it was a fa- uh, we're going to have a rematch. You kind of indicated that's yeah. more than likely going to happen. But what was so great about that fight as well is I think a lot of boxing fans may well have been a little bit delusioned with the heavyweight division just because we've not been having the big fights that we wanted. And I know this isn't on that scale in terms mm. of where these two fighters are at right now in their careers, but this was just a genuine, incredible fight. Do you know what it is, Nat? I think it's something magical, something special about fighting for the British title. It brings the best out in a, in a fighter. I don't know what it is about that. You know, when they get their European opportunities, Commonwealth opportunities or world title opportunities, there's something magical about the British title that, that guys just seem to go to a place you go, no normal human being would go there. There's so much insanity around what it is. Do you know what I mean? When you think about it and you break it down, you think like... How do these guys go to where they go to? How did I used to go there? Like I look at it now. When you're out of the game and you're and you're sitting back and you watch it, you just appreciate like what they are going through. Like the mental side of things is absolutely insane. Yeah. Do you know what? Do you know when you, you see these YouTubers fighting now? That is the complete opposite. When well, you're watching absolutely. it, absolutely. But that's when you go. What we watched last night. What we witnessed last night was real boxing like to the extreme like so i mean they ticked every single box you go youtube boxing youtube is like slash youtube boxing is slash wwe slash entertainment Mm. there's a little bit of everything for the younger generation and whatnot but for your boxing fans or you don't even have to be a boxing fan to appreciate what you saw last night you um yeah you just have to you just have to appreciate what actually went on in that ring and what those guys went through and you just go i'm sure i heard the referee look at his nose and say just run it off (laughs) <laughs> I mean, he looked, at his, he looked at his nose. He was hanging off his nose, and he went, "Yeah, you're all right. Play yeah, on." I know. It's a I know. Fun, just all I listen, I, it was like you say. You just felt one hook in the wrong place here, and that nose is actually coming off his face. So, it was it, it was like that, and it was just like you just looked at it. And I, I was thinking, please don't get stopped on this because you you deserve to go out on your shield here, and like he was just. I, I, it was just yeah, it was the character of both of them. Uh, presumably, I mean, I don't know. Did you see them after the fight? Were they? apart from the obvious with the nose, but how were they? Because it was so gruelling, it was so testing. They, absolutely, and look, do you know what? They, they they both knew they obviously had been through something absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. But it was Fabio Wardley, actually, who surprised me, and he said, you know what? Yeah, like, he was there, and he was like, I thought I nicked it, but, you know, he deserves the rematch, and we should get it on again. I'll just go, like, you've just underlined exactly what I was talking about with the insanity thing. I go, like, why would you even be thinking about that? I'd be going... I'm surprised he didn't just say, let's get back in the ring now, well, let's it, carry on. It's you sort know? of like that. Yeah, yeah, give us 20 minutes and yeah. like, and let, yeah. let me have a little drink of water and we'll go back at it. It was like, yeah, it was just... I mean, the whole card from bottom to top, there was a fight on there that I want to mention, actually, that no one saw because it didn't go out on anything. It was oh. a fight that they went before and that was Alan Babich, the savage Babich against Steve Robinson. Steve Robinson, the six foot, um, six foot seven, Ivan Durant. Ego, that's exactly what he looked like. And these guys, that was like at 10 to 5, and they just put it on and they and they just went and Babich won in the end in the fourth round knockout. But it was just, again, it was one of the fights like you saw at the top of the bill and you just looked at it and go, how has that not been aired? There was, I don't know, there was probably two or 3,000 people in there at the time. You go, it was just unbelievable. So credit to both of them as well. I know you want to talk about Ben Whitaker, which we'll get to I in watched the Whitaker fight, yeah. But before mm. we get to that, just, when, just on these two finally, they'll get a rematch at some point. What happens with them next, though, in terms of their careers? Where can they go? Well, obviously, the obvious one is the immediate rematch, but I think that's down to the champion now, Fabio Wardley. He's, he mentioned that he would like to do that again. don't know why, why he would even think about that. But, you know, I think that what with what's going on out in Saudi Arabia and the landscape of the heavyweights, it's all about securing that financial security for your family, etc. That's where the big money's at. That's where all the heavyweights are. It's like a Super League out there right now. But I think the winner of this, you know if we go again with a rematch, they put themselves straight up there in, in, in that mix. Because if you look at the heavyweight fights that have gone on out there mm. so far and you compare it to that one, you go... How would them two get on against um, Anthony Joshua? Well, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because Joshua's the, like... Well, I think what we saw there was that we, experience plays a big part in it. Like, you know, Fabio Wardley had that, that experience in the professional ring, but... 
uh, Fraser Clark had the experience from the amateurs, so he looked the more complete fighter, but Wardley just knew how to weather the storm, come back, bite on his gum shield. Joshua's at that other level. I think that it's too soon for them right now against mm. Anthony Joshua, but fights like that is like, this is the apprenticeship for when you get up there. And I think what they both proved is that they belong up there in that mix with those top heavyweights. So, mm. yeah, I mean, you know, that it was great entertainment. No, I, I wasn't aware of this one. I want to highlight this before you mentioned Ben Whitaker. We've had a text in about Leon... Wiling? Willings, 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 Willings yeah. Uh, he took on his first fight just nine days' notice. Is that right? Yeah, oh, yeah. And do you know what it is? That was that was Ben Whitaker's a, Ben Whitaker's opponent. Oh, I didn't see yeah. that. Yeah, because you, you wanted to talk about it, and I said I didn't see that fight. So forgive me, I didn't know. My that. My goodness, what a fight that was as well. It was so intriguing because Whitaker was taking the Mickey at times, showboating, and this lad has took the fight nine days. Nine days. That's dropped his arms and was saying, come on then, yeah, come and, and hit me. And, and he was coming back with good left at the yeah. zone. I mean, everyone was talking about Ben Whitaker and, well, has he not got the power that we thought he had this and that? he go, no, forget Ben. He's a great fighter and he's like the next superstar of British boxing. Let's give credit to Leon Willings yes. and what this kid has done. I went, That's amazing, he that, blew yeah. me away, Leon yeah, Willings, because it was like he made a real fight of it. Like Ben Whitaker is a like exceptional talent. I think he's one of the best talents globally at the moment coming through. And you look at well, Leon Willings and we go, we found a little diamond in the rough here. But like, he was absolutely sensational. He deserves a lot of credit because he made that a really good fight. Like yeah. you say, Dean, Ben started trying to clown around a little bit at first and Leon went, not having none of this, mate. <laughs> like, hey, hey, is my right? His Whoop, there's my yeah. left. Yeah, it was like... Look, he, had a, he, he looked like he had a knockout punch in him as he well was, at any minute. Listen, I think a fight like that, sometimes when a fighter loses in a fight like that, that can be the making of them. Like He'll go back to the drawing board. He's taken a lot of credit away from that performance he put in against Ben Whitaker. And, and even more importantly, now people know who he is. And I think that's what it's all about, getting that opportunity. You go in there and you go, so that's why he's gone nine days notice. Do you want to fight Ben Whitaker? Yeah, why not? And like any normal person would go, why would you do that in nine days' mm -hmm. notice? This kid mm -hmm. is a superstar. And he took it and he like you know, he come out on merit there and he come out with, yeah, a lot of credibility. I'm 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 really pleased for him. Do you think he went too far a little bit when he when he tapped he tapped him on the head? Yeah, but you know what, Dean, that's what he does. It's like we live in a world now of entertainment, like I say to you, it's like about putting bums on seats. You know, you talk about another fight that was on there, Videl Riley, who was defending his English title against Mikhail Lowell. White Riley won the fight and he done, you know, and he boxed brilliantly. But what I'm saying is he played it safe and he kept on the outside and everything else. The crowd was quite silent. When Ben Whitaker's doing stuff like this, the people love it, you know? And mm -hmm. I think that what we've got to do is, yeah, yeah, it can be disrespectful, but that's part of his game. He goes, if he's tapping on his head, now all of a sudden he's got inside the guy's head. The guy's now broke his game plan. He goes and does something stupid and boom, gets knocked out so perfect game plan mm. from Ben Whitaker, and I think that yeah the crowd absolutely love it and I think you know you look at like Nassim Hamed and you go back even further to like Muhammad Ali they weren't appreciated at first but when you realise that they are actually special talents you go sit back and enjoy the ride because well, that's, that's yeah. what we should do but that's the thing isn't it ultimately if you have all these antics the showboating so you've got to back it up yeah. as well and, uh, he, can. and he can do it yeah and we got to mention Congo oh well yeah, he what fought well Chris Congo, yeah, he beat Florian Marku last night and it was one of those ones a lot of people thought Marku was going to win the fight. Marku come out, started quite well. Congo was doing well as well. It was a little bit of back and forth, but it was a fight where I thought Chris Congo would win the first half and Marku would win the second half and it was one of those ones you go, well, I don't know where it's going to go, but actually it was in reverse. Mm. I think Marku done well at the beginning and then Congo got into a rhythm, boxed well and ran out a deserved winner. you got to give him credit for that. He, um, he boxed brilliantly and what a great fight that was as well. Mm. Spencer, we always appreciate you popping in, chatting to us about everything. It's been an eventful night, a great night, I'm sure. Mm. Um, and we'll hopefully see that rematch between Wardley and Clark as well. Are you going to do some more talk sport boxing right now? I am. I'm What's, next? Next? What's the next big fight to look forward to? So the next big fight to look forward to is... Great question. Put me on the spot there, mate. Well, Fury got, Usyk's not far Yeah, Fury, off, is Fury Usyk, obviously, is on May the 18th out there. We've got the five versus five. We've got Johnny Nelson downstairs. Talk boxing we're going to do for tomorrow. So we're going to go for all that sort of stuff. So, yeah... Loads of stuff going on. Loads of stuff happening. I think Callum Simpson was there. Oh, they announced in the ring, actually. Actually, they announced in the ring Harlem, Be um, Harlem Eubank versus Adam Azim. They've announced that oh, fight going yeah. on as well. So that's a great fight. And yeah. Chris Eubank was there last night. Steve Collins was there last night. Something magical. Funny yeah, as well, Chris Eubank hilarious he's <laughs> Barry McGuigan and Chris Eubank and they asked <laughs> Chris Eubank a question he needed a translator <laughs> yeah, no he's gone mate <laughs> absolutely nuts but it was, uh, yeah, a good nuts a good well, nuts yeah. you're with Johnny Nelson then for Talks What Boxing yes. which people can listen into and watch on YouTube so thank you Spencer Thanks, for being with guys. us today thanks All right. Cheers, uh, this is